When it comes to the environment and climate change, I believe that there is too much focus on data, numbers, volumes and quantities. And this data-driven approach, in my opinion, is prone to miss the big picture and even being meaningless. So in this video, we will address this issue and let's start with a test. Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au on a mission to make Australian educational and care organizations sustainable, frugal and improve the ecological footprint. Here is the test. Replay in your mind, rather than imagine, your favorite piece of music or song. You got it? Cool. Now I will give you the facts now. Your favorite piece of music is 3 minutes 47 seconds long. There are 6 musical instruments playing with piano being the dominant one, playing 65% uh, of the time, the second is saxophone, 30% of the time, and guitar, 27% to 40% of the time, depending on the pitch. There is variety of notes being played in a song, ranging from short, medium to long, distributed at the ratio 1 to 3 to 7. And there are two voices singing, one louder at about 60 to 70 decibels, playing about 47% of the time, and the other one, uh, more quiet, uh, at about 40 decibels, and singing throughout the song 60% of the time. Now that you know, does it mean a lot to you? Do you value it more? And suppose you want to get someone on board or share with someone, is this breakdown going to do the job? Now, we, we have to give credit to Nietzsche, because it was his idea, this analogy with music. Uh, in 1882, he published his Gay Science, and in it, he is critical, among other things, he is critical of back then dominant scientific worldview, which he calls the mechanistic worldview. And uh, I believe you can use this analogy to favorite book, or a movie, or food, or even holiday destination. And we might laugh at this as, oh, you know, this is ridiculous. But I see some parallels between uh, what Nietzsche called the mechanistic worldview and what is nowadays emerging our data-driven worldview and with it emphasis on data-driven behavior. Now, let's go back to the issue of the environment and climate change. Now, climate science, while very complex, essentially boils down to series of measurements, such as uh, the rate of glacier melting, uh, the, ra the rise of temperature, the, the concentration of CO2 particles in the atmosphere, or the rate of deforestation or temperature rise, right? It's a science, so no surprise. There are quantifiable data, uh, numbers, and targets. And that's good. It's good because with these, and it allows us to set targets and then see whether we're on track or not. And one example of this, these targets is the Paris Agreement. In order to limit global warming by 1.5 degrees by 2030, our personal per capita greenhouse gas emissions must be up to 2.1 tons of CO2 equivalent per person, right? So, so again, these are good, these facts, but are they good enough? Are they good enough? Or are we missing the big picture? Is it meaningful? I don't believe this is the full story. Now, you might object to this and say, this is completely ridiculous point. Of course, these facts, these data, these targets, these are the bedrock for, upon which we then build the, our policies, our behavior change and our attitudes, right? Or change attitudes, right? Well, no, I, be, I don't believe so. I, and it's essentially a philosophical question. And the question is, does the particular determine the universal? In other words, do these numbers, targets, data, facts, do they determine the behavior change, the attitudes, the policies? 
I believe that they don't and they, they should not, because uh, the particular does not determine the universal. It's the universal that chooses to use the particular as a tool. Very important tool, very valid, right? Absolutely. But still only a tool. That relationship is not equal. That, uh, that tool, that uh, particular, is subordinate to the universal. And that, that relationship, that dynamic, needs to be balanced. And it seems like that the particular, which will bring us to the next point, by the way, the particular tries to reverse that order. And that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of problems. And I think climate change is one of them. To add another layer to this, I would like to share insights of, from, that I got from reading Master and his emissary. Ian McGilchrist is British neuroscientist and psychiatrist. Now, the name a little bit gives it away. Master and his emissary. Master is the right hemisphere and emissary is the left hemisphere. Let's see some of the differences between the hemispheres. So, left hemisphere sees a tree, right hemisphere a forest. Left hemisphere sees quantities, right hemisphere qualities. Left hemisphere sees categories, right hemisphere uniqueness. Left hemisphere is static, right hemisphere is dynamic. Left hemispheres see fragmentation, right hemisphere see holism. Left hemisphere see things in isolation and, and fragmented and can manipulate things. Right hemisphere is able to see context and meaning, unlike left hemisphere, which sees the word, words and the numbers. McGilchrist proposes that we are leaning to the emissary's end, right? And we better at specialization and categorization and quantifying all of these domains that are that left hemisphere is good at, but it can't see the, see the context or meaning, because that's the specialty of the right hemisphere. And he proposes that because of this imbalance, the emissary is trying to be the master, remember, the particular and the universal, and that's what is causing the problem. Think about it. Let's go back to that case of this target that we've got, Paris Agreement target. By 2030, individual emissions per person must be up to 2.1 tons of CO2 equivalent, right? Now, that is clear target, that is factual, that is data, it's evidence-based, sure, but will someone, does it, doesn't it ignore human nature? Will someone care if you tell them that you got to reduce, and by the way, in Australia, our Personal emissions are 15 and a half tons of CO2, just uh, by the way. Will someone actually take action based on if they bombard it with these targets and data all day long? Will they actually change behavior? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Because again, we are reversing that order, that particular is being portrayed as the solution, but it's not. It's only a tool. If you lasted this long, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I hope you got some value out of this. We are Sustainable Butterflies, and who are we doing this for? For the environment, future generations, plants, animals, including butterflies. You have a great day.